Today we're going to talk about topographic maps and satellite maps. Topographic maps are two-dimensional maps with three-dimensional representation. Topographic maps indicate areas of elevation, the height above sea level. The change in elevation from one location to another is called relief. Mountains and plateaus are areas with high relief, while beaches and plains are areas with low relief. A line on a topographic map that represents an area with equal elevation is called a contour line. Multiple contour lines represent areas with different elevations. Generally, every fifth contour line is darker in color and has the elevation written on it. These are called index contour lines. Topographic map symbols and colors are standardized. So again, contour lines are lines that show changes in elevation. In other words, moving from one line to the next, you're changing elevation. All of the points on a given line are the same elevation. So if you are looking at one contour line, that is all one elevation. And again, moving from one line to the next is a change in elevation. That change in elevation is called the contour interval. That is the amount of elevation change from one contour line to the next. Different topographic maps will have different contour intervals. So you must find that information generally in the key or legend of the map. Looking at this map, which does not have a contour interval on it, so we're not worried about right now the, the change in elevation, but understand that each contour line is a line of equal elevation. Notice that contour lines do not cross. They do not split, nor do they branch off. Small inner closed contour lines like these generally represent hilltops or peaks. Contour lines eventually connect with themselves but are not always seen on the map. The closer the contour lines are together the steeper the slope, and the farther apart they are, the gentler the slope. Remember the contour interval of any given map remains constant, though different maps will have different contour intervals. When contour lines cross a river or a stream, the bottom will look like a V-shape quite often, or a U-shape. And the V-shape or U-shape always point uphill. Depressions are indicated by a different type of contour line. Over here on the right is a depression. Then you will notice these little marks, which are called hasher marks. and They indicate that we are going down. This is, a, this is a depression or a hole. The contour interval remains the same. So by looking at this contour map, can you tell what the contour interval is, the distance or elevation change between each line. 
Remember, the darker lines are the index line, and they are marked. So this is 900. It could be meters. It could be feet. This line, we are going downhill. So here, this is 890 meters or feet. So what is the contour interval of this map? Well, if you said the contour interval is 2, you would be correct. Where do you think the steepest hill or steepest relief on this map would be? Well, remember, the closer the lines are together, the steeper the relief. Over here on the left top, we have the lines have really come close together. This would indicate a very steep slope. In fact, when lines are on top of one another, it would represent a cliff or a, a, a straight drop. Over at the bottom here, we will notice that the lines are farther apart. This is a more gentle slope. And notice that this is V-shaped here, so we would have possibly a creek or at least a draw running through here. And remember, these point uphill, so as we go from here to here, we are going up in elevation. So if we look at this map in general, we would see that if we look closely, we would see down the middle is probably a valley surrounded by two hills, one here and one here, or mountains possibly. Now let's talk a little bit about satellite maps. Satellite maps are a relatively new type of map um, because we have just recently in the past half century or less, we have started to uh, gather information about our Earth from photographs taken from satellites or from space. And the map that you see here is a map put together from photographs of the entire Earth, where we can see basically all of the continents and a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of information about the continents. You can see where the where the deserts are and where it's more forested, uh, where it's ice capped. Uh, so we we can gather a lot of information about satell about our Earth from satellite maps. Uh, we can see. Uh, where we have weathering and erosion taking place when we look at a, at a map closer. We can also gather information about human activity and where deforestation is taking place. So satellite maps have be, become an important map for us to study the earth and what is happening to the earth either through nature or through human activity. Here is a map that you may or may not recognize, but this is actually a map of our area. Down here you can see this. This is obviously human activity as I move the pointer around the loop of Lufkin. So here's downtown Lufkin. Right out in this area is where we are. This is would be the central school area. Can you... Uh, Look at the map and tell where the river may run, the, the Angelina River. Well, if you look closely, you can see this green area through here, and this would be the river uh, running through here, and we actually can see the uh, beginning of, of Sam Rayburn. Can you recognize the land form in this map. Well, this is actually a map of 
southern Louisiana, and here we have the Mississippi River, and right through here is the River Delta. So this is, this is a delta, and all of this, the delta was formed from the Mississippi River, bringing down sediments and deposit, depositing them, creating this land area jutting out into the Gulf of Mexico. By looking at this map, what, what would you think you uh, type of uh, climate this particular region might have? Well, if you said desert, you would be correct. Notice that there is little vegetation. Where we do have green areas are probably mountainous, more mountainous areas, uh, because with elevation you're going to get uh, rising uh, warm air that's cooling, and so the water in that air is condensing, and, and they're going to get a little bit more rainfall, and with more rainfall we get more vegetation. Now, can you see the river in this map? Well, along here you can actually see the river running and uh, this is a lake that's where the river has been dammed up. And I believe that, if I remember correctly, this would be the Colorado River and this would be in probably uh, Arizona is the region that we're looking at here. Taking a look at another map. Can you see any major differences here? Can you tell where human activity is taking place? This is the front range of the uh, Colorado Rockies. Uh, you can see right along here from from this line to the right is the Great Plains and everything to the left is the Rocky Mountains and you can actually see some of the uh, snow-capped peaks of the Rockies and you can get an idea of the relief in this map of the mountains though you don't get a real feel for their for their elevation by looking at, at a a satellite map. Can you guess the uh, type of climate or environment in this map? Well, pretty obvious there's not much vegetation so this would be a desert region. And if you look along here, what do you think you see? Remember this is taken from a satellite so we are looking from far above the earth. This is actually the Grand Canyon, and of course this all is desert region in the Arizona and Utah area. Do you recognize this? Well, remember the Mississippi Delta? Here's the Mississippi Delta sticking out into the Gulf of Mexico. And this large peninsula is Florida. Off of Florida, we have the, the uh, Florida Keys, Key West, and all is right in this area. And these are the, the Florida Keys. Over here we have the Bahamas, Cuba, down below Florida, and this is the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Now, we do need to understand, that looking at this, that we see the ocean and we see the ocean floor and we can actually tell from the different colors, kind of get some sense or idea of the, of the ocean depths. But this was actually put into this photograph. The, you photograph the uh, ocean floors with a regular camera and you're, not, you're certainly not going to get this. You're just going to get what you see at the top of the ocean. So they used a different technology to find the uh, 
relief on the ocean floor. But the darker is going to be the, the uh, deeper parts of the ocean. We see along here, this is the continental shelf. So all of this little bit lighter blue is part of the continent of North America. And then this is the uh, ocean, and this is going to be all oceanic crust, the darker blue. And we get over here with a different color blue, and we, we can see that the ocean floor is, is much shallower than what we were looking at in other parts. You get around the Bahama area, and you have very shallow waters all around in that area. So those are just a few things about topic, about uh, satellite maps. Remember that satellite maps can be used to look at uh, human activity, deforestation, uh, agriculture, and things like that. And we can also see from satellite maps uh, how nature is affecting our Earth with, with uh, weathering and with erosion.